Um, today's the title of today's message is Maturing Your Faith. Really and truly throughout this entire service, I really feel like God's anointing, not only on, on this message, but on, on this entire service. I believe that God is, if I could say it like this, he's reaching down from heaven and picking somebody today and saying, this is what I have in store for you. And on the tail end of that last commercial, I want to talk to you as believers about maturing as a believer, maturing in your walk with the Lord, maturing in your faith in the Lord. So if you have your Bibles, if you would please, if you would turn them to John chapter 9, verse 1 through 3. John chapter 9, verse 1 through 3. And I'm reading on the NIV version. And it's funny because I've actually preached on this before. And so last night I was kind of like, Lord, I've preached on this before, but not from this perspective. So I want to share it with you because it has to do with maturing the way that we think as believers. If I could say it like that. And Jesus gives us the example as he's talking to his disciples. John chapter 9, verse 1. I'll be reading through verse 3. We're going to be doing a lot of reading today, but uh, we'll start off here. It says, as he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus. But this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I come before you right now and I thank you for this opportunity, this honor, and this privilege to be able to speak and preach and teach your word. I pray that you would anoint me to speak it like the way you want it delivered. I pray that in Jesus' precious and holy name, I pray that you would anoint me by the power, the authority, and the unction of your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come in and have your way. I pray that you would begin to reveal to people that are here this morning and those that are watching by social media that some of the things that they may be going through are so that way you can display your mighty works in their lives. I pray that in Jesus' name, remove anything that would hinder and anything that would distract in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'm finding as I talk to other believers, whether they're here at this church or whether they're in my workplace or whether they're anywhere in the world, that many of us are waiting for something big to happen in our lives. Many of us are waiting for some type of breakthrough or some type of healing or some type of promise to happen in our lives. And if not in our lives and in our children's lives and if not, if not in, in their lives, in our spouse's life or in our situations or in our circumstances. And there always seems to be a waiting that we do for us to either mature or for something in our lives to mature or for it to develop into something that we think that it should be a certain way. I also find it interesting that the way that you and I can imagine the way things are supposed to be can be very different from the way it is when we come home, right? We might think of the household hold a certain way in our minds, the way we saw it, right? If those of you who are old enough to remember Leave It to Beaver, you saw the way that that, that their house was and you thought that every house in America should be that way and then you come home to a totally different house. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> right? You're like, man, I thought Leave it to Beaver has a maid, right? Not us. There always seems to be a big difference in the way that we the way that you envision something in your mind as opposed to the way it really is in reality. And the Bible says this when with regards to faith. It says that faith is the is the confidence in what we hope for and the assurance of those things that we do not see. And according to scripture, you get faith by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It's very specific. Those are two scriptures that I'm giving you that are straight out of the Bible. And what that means when it says that you get faith by hearing and hearing by the word of God, it's basically saying that when you and I come together, we don't just come together just to praise the Lord. That is part of it. But that's that's not that's not why we should be coming together. You should be praising the Lord all the time, whether we're together or not. You should be worshiping the Lord all the time. We shouldn't just come to church just to see our friends or just to catch up with family members or just to see who showed up or who's missing or what they're wearing. We should come to church to hear from God and to mature ourselves in Him, to mature ourselves as believers. Because, as believers. because really and truly, we can do all that other stuff any other time. We need to be able to grow in the Lord and not act like we know it all. I'm not being ugly when I say that, but there's always room for growth. The day that you stop growing in the Lord, really and truly, you're no good to anybody. Because you can't help anybody. You know what I've learned? Is that every time that I study, 
whether it's for the message or whether it's, it's because I'm studying on my own for, for personal growth, is that every time I read the Word of God, I get something new out of it. Every time that I read the Word of God or every time that I get into prayer, something new happens. You ever notice that we try to keep the order of service kind of similar, right? Because some people don't like surprises. But if, you, if you're here every Sunday, you realize that there's always a curveball that somebody throws in at one point or another. There's just a slight change up or a slight difference. And I feel like God does that to remind us that, hey, there's always room for growth. We don't Man. know it all. Yes, we're saved. And yes, some of us are sanctified, sealed, and delivered. But there is still always room for growth. And, and it comes through the Word of God. The Word of God should give you hope. And it should give you faith that the in the promises that God has given you in this Word. The only way that you're ever going to know what God has promised you already is in His Word. And the only way you're ever going to find out is if you open that Word of God and you begin to read it for yourself. Don't go by what I'm telling you. Don't go by what any other minister or any other preacher is telling you. I, I would like for you to look it up for yourself. I'd like for you to challenge it. You know, the Bible says to test, to test the spirits. It says, it talks about looking into the word for yourself. Don't just rely on Sunday morning service or Wednesday night to feed yourself. As a matter of fact, as you mature in the Lord, you should be able to go. It's like a baby, right? At first, you're, you're spoon fed, right? Or you're bottle fed at first. They're nursing you, they're changing you, and as you get a little bit older, you start, they start teaching you, right? They talk about the earth, like, yeah, right? Yeah. Come on, open your mouth, yeah. Right, they do that, and then later on, they, tuck, they put a bib on you, and they give you something that you can hold in your hands, you start eating it, and as the child grows, they start to learn how to do it themselves. It's the same thing with the restroom, right? At first, you're cleaning their little messes, and you're wiping them down, and you're bathing them, and you're changing them, and then after a while, it's like, hey, clean yourself. Right? <laughs> After a while, you're like, hey, hurry up, get in there, get in, get in and take a shower or take a bath. You got school in the morning. Right? With my kids, George, Jeremiah, he's six, he'll call for me. Daddy, come and bathe me. Daddy, come and clean me. I'm like, hey, man, you're six years old. <laughs> he's like, yeah, but you, I like the way you do it. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I tell him, remember when I'm old. <laughs> God's promises will come to pass in your life. But you've got to find out what those promises are. And sometimes you have to wait. Sometimes, as much as we don't like to wait because we like to be in control, sometimes we have to wait. And the book of Isaiah says this about waiting. It says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. In other words, while you don't just sit there while you're waiting. God is challenging you and calling you to do your part. In other words, you need to renew your strength while you wait, like the way the scripture says. So that way, whenever whatever it is that you're waiting for happens, you're prepared and you're ready and you're strong enough and you're mature enough to see it all the way through. You have to get ready while you wait. You know, it reminds me of a, of, of a preaching that I heard many years ago. T.D. Jakes was preaching. And he was talking about he was talking about the Israelites and how they had come out of Israel. Um, I'm sorry, they had come out of Egypt, and they were in the wilderness. And the Bible says that they were in the wilderness waiting for 40 years for the promised land. Is what is what they were waiting for. And they were waiting for the promised land. And T.D.J. says during that time that they were in the wilderness, in that wilderness season of their lives, or those seasons of their lives, they should have been getting ready for the promised land. They should have been getting ready. In your downtime, you need to be getting ready for God's promises in your life. Even a boxer, whenever he's not boxing, or some of you who watched the UFC fight yesterday in the afternoon, whenever they're not fighting, they're training for that fight constantly. Football players do the same thing. When y'all leave here and y'all go watch whatever game you're going to watch, I want you to know that all week long, or all season long, these guys have been preparing for game day, and that's today. And we should be doing the same thing. You should be getting ready in your downtime for whatever, whatever, so you're able to handle whatever God is going to give you, whether it's a Man. promise or whatever it is Man. in your life, you need to be prepared in your downtime. Yes. Amen. Amen. Amen? You have to be mature enough and you have to be strong enough to even deal with people who are naysaying, as they say, or, or critics in your life or haters in your life. That's the modern term, right? Because haters going to hate, right? That's what they say. You have to be prepared. For those things, because there are, there's always going to be people who can't stand and see you being blessed. 
And you have to say it's okay. It's okay. Let them, let them hate. That's not your fight to fight. You just focus on your relationship with the Lord. It doesn't matter what other people say about you. Focus on your relationship with the Lord. As a matter of fact, make it up in your mind today that you're no longer going to worry about what other people think about you or what they say about you behind your back. Make it up in your mind today that you're maturing your faith in the Lord today. And part of maturing your faith in the Lord is not worrying about what everybody else says, not worrying about pleasing other people, but worrying about pleasing God and putting Amen. a smile on His face. Amen. 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 Here in this text that we opened up with, Jesus is teaching his disciples about faith. And oftentimes, whenever you face adversity in your life, you want to know why this is happening in your life. I talked about this a little bit last week. We want to know why is this happening? Lord, why are you allowing this to happen to me? Many times, we just want someone to blame. You'll hear people say, oh, I'm like that because that's the way I was raised. Or, oh, I'm not that way because I wasn't raised that way. I wasn't raised to show affection. I wasn't raised to show love, but you show anger very well. You show hatred very well, so obviously you were taught something. And those things that I'm talking about, those are learned behaviors. But yet we'll make excuses for the places that we fail to do so. And we need to stop doing that. We always want to give a reason as to why things are the way that they are. And Jesus blows that kind of logic right out of the water when he says this. Neither his parents nor his, neither, neither this man nor his parents sinned. But this all happened so that the works of God might be displayed in his life. You see, some of you have been blaming others for something that they had nothing to do with. Some of you have been blaming yourself for something that you had nothing to do with. It was nothing that you did. It was nothing that your parents did. It was nothing that anybody else did. Sometimes things just happen. Sometimes life just happens. And sometimes bad things happen to good people. But instead of you trying to find somebody to blame for all the other stuff that's happened in your life, you, what you need to do is you need, you need to start getting ready for that breakthrough. You need to start getting ready for that promise. You need to start getting ready for the healing and the miracle that God's about to place on your life. So here in this text, Jesus is also teaching you and I that God shows us his power through our adversities and through our circumstances. God shows up. He actually says, Jesus says, the reason why, it's not because he sinned, and it's not because his parents sinned, but the reason why he was born blind is so that God could demonstrate and display his power in his life. Jesus is telling us some people are just born with affliction. Some people are just born in adversity. Some people are just born in opposition so that God can show up in your life and, sh and show off his power and his glory and his might and show out every devil in hell. You were born that way so that he can heal you, deliver you, and set you free. And some of us, we walk, we walk around crippled, waiting for God to, to heal us and to deliver us, and it never comes. And the answer, and, and the question to that is why? Is it because we lack faith? Because that's what a lot of preachers will tell you. Is it because we need to mature in our faith? Because that's what a lot of preachers will tell you. Or is it because we haven't lined up with that favor of God yet? Well, we haven't matured to be able to receive it and handle it. I believe that God blessed us with this ministry in due time, and he started to cause it to grow in due time, because if he had just done it overnight, I don't think that we would be able to, to sustain having a full church. Do you, you understand what I'm telling you? But many of us, we have to grow. We, you, 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 you'll hear preachers in different churches talk about church, church growth, church growth, church growth, church growth, and then what will happen is people will come in, they'll get saved, and then they'll give their lives to Jesus, and then they leave, and we never see them again. Some people call it the bus effect, right? They come in the front of the bus and then they walk out the back. And we need to stop that walking out and we need to start, before God can grow us, God has already shown this, shown this to me, before God can grow us physically, we have to grow internally. Amen. We have to mature internally. We have to stop getting offended for every little thing. We need, we need to stop, if I can, can I be real like that? We need to stop, we need to stop letting the little things bother us and we need to be mature in the Lord. You know, there's, and, and Pastor Rose said it a little while ago. There are things that happen behind the scenes. God bless you. There are things that happen behind the scenes that if we were just to allow it to affect us, we would all be miserable. Mm. Sometimes we come up here and the sound system's messed up and the mics ain't working and all kinds of stuff. And we just have to push past that and let God be God. Sometimes the coffee, the coffee, the coffee shop. Somebody went in there and they left it a mess, or sometimes it's the little chapel, or whatever the case is. But
But in reality, at the end of the day, we just gotta, we gotta keep marching forward because God is gonna be the one who gets the glory. You know what my prayer is? Let me tell you what my secret prayer is. I'm gonna share it with you. Whenever things like that happen, I walk away and I get to an isolated place by myself, like the way Jesus did, and I say, Lord, I know that the enemy intended this for that, but I pray right now in the name of your son Jesus that you would turn around and that souls would be saved over what the enemy tried to do. Lord, Amen. let us get them back that way, right? You can apply it, you can apply it to your personal life. If you're arguing with somebody on your way to church, right? You can say, Lord, when we get there, I'm gonna praise you like nobody's looking. I'm gonna dance like there's nobody even watching. I'm gonna praise you and worship you. And Lord, I pray that you would fix this as I seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and put, I pray that you would put everything in order for me and my life. Amen. What I've learned about God is that if you focus on his business, he'll take care of your business. And see, the trial that you're in right now, it might just be because God allowed it to happen so that he could demonstrate his power in your life. You know, the Bible says that God's strength is made perfect in your weakness. You see, it's when we're weak, it's when we want to give up, it's when we want to fall, it's when we want to give in, it's when we want to lash out in the flesh, as church people say, that's when God, is his strength is made, made perfect. In other words, when you're at your worst, God is at his best. Amen. 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 You with me this morning? And just because you're in a crisis right now doesn't mean that you're going to stay there. As a matter of fact, I would dare say to you that God's getting ready to bless you and bring you out of that thing in the name of Jesus. Amen. Something's about to happen in your life, and there has to be. There, there, there's been times in your life where you've gone through challenges, and you've gone through adversity, and you felt like giving up, and you felt like quitting, and you felt like throwing in the towel. Or maybe there have been times in your life where you felt like your life wasn't worth living, but at the worst moment of your life, there's a still small voice that keeps telling you over and over and over again to hold on and not give up and not quit because something is about to happen in your life, and you'll only see it if you hang on to that still small voice. And you might not even know what it is, but you know in your heart of hearts that something is about to happen. And somehow, some way, wherever you're at right now, you're not going to end up there. Because something is about to happen in your life. And you can't explain it, but you feel it, and you know it, like you know it, like you know it, that something is about to happen. Amen? Amen. And the Bible says that this man was born blind. That means that he had never seen anything before. That means that he could not see. He had no vision. You know, people might be telling you how great and how grand marriage is. But you might not be able to see it before you're standing this morning. They might be telling you about all the miracles that are happening all around you. And you might not have the capacity to see those things this morning. But you have to mature your faith in the Lord even if you can't see something. Even if it hasn't happened for you yet, you have to be mature enough to know that God is not, he, he respects, the Bible says that he respects, he's a respecter of no man. In other words, the favor that he gives to one, he'll give to the other. But you have to mature your faith in the Lord in spite of rejection. You have to mature your faith in the Lord in the middle of adversity. You have to mature your faith in the Lord in the midst of opposition. You have to mature your faith in the Lord even if you have to do it all alone. Sometimes people will say, well, I didn't go because my wife didn't go. Or I didn't go because my husband didn't go. Is that what you're going to tell God when you get to heaven? Hmm. Hey, Lord, I didn't go because my other half didn't go. Maybe you're the example that God has picked to save your family. Don't leave it to somebody else. You have a relationship with the Almighty. And there's, something, that, there's something to be said and there's something to be learned from people who still grow in the midst of adversity and in the midst of opposition. You see, someone else, they may have quit. Someone else, they may have given up. Someone else may have stopped and wanted to die. But there are people like this guy right here, this blind guy, who kept going and kept growing in the midst of his blindness. He could have made every excuse in the world. Oh, I can't go because I'm blind. Somebody's going to have to take care of me. Somebody's going to have to guide me. No. He, if you read this story all the way through, what you'll find out is that he went to Jesus. This guy was begging him on the side of the road or on the side of the temple. And Jesus decided to heal him. And Jesus did it in an unorthodox way. Jesus spit on the ground and made mud or putty out of that spit and put it in this guy's eyes. That's gross. Like a special spit ointment and put it on his eyes. And then told him, hey, go to the, 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 the pool of Siloam and bathe in there. And he did it. And according to scripture, that's how he received his healing because he was obedient to Jesus. 
There are some people in this room who are growing in the Lord in spite of their opposition and in spite of their adversity. They don't have what everybody else has. They don't see the blessings that everybody else is seeing, but yet they're still moving forward in the Lord. They're still growing and they're still maturing their faith in the Lord anyway. And if, it, and if that's you, then I have a message for you to start getting ready while you wait because your promise is coming, because your breakthrough is coming, and because your miracle is coming in the name of Jesus. Your healing is coming. Just hang on, hold on, and get ready during this cell time in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Start getting ready right now. Start getting ready in spite of your situation. Start getting ready in the midst of your adversity. Start getting ready in the middle of your crisis. God didn't bring you this word just so that you could be miserable all your life. Refuse to live a miserable per as a miserable person. Refuse to die as a miserable person. I'm telling you that your breakthrough and your promise and your healing and your miracle is coming this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. There's got to be more to life than the situation that you're in right now or the circumstance that you're in right now. There has to be something else. But what I love about God is that sometimes... The method that he uses is not the method that we would have wanted or the method that we would have chosen. Sometimes the way that God brings you through something, he's got to bring you through it. He ain't going to bring you over it. He ain't going to bring you around it. He's going to bring you through it. And it's many times not the way that we would have wanted to go through it. But we come out, the Bible says you come out as pure as gold on the other side. You know, sometimes God will use a person that you didn't choose or that you wouldn't have cho chosen. And he'll use them just to show up and show off. And there are times, you know, I'm going to say, like, there are people who God has brought to this church that I would have never thought in a million years would have come to this church. God has allowed me to lead people to the Lord. I'm going to, if I can be real with you, right? There are some people, nobody in here, so before I say that, I'm say, uh, God has used me, right, in my walk with Him and my and, and talking. I've actually been ministering to one person, right, whether it was at work or at a part time or whatever. And all of a sudden, it won't even be this person that I thought it was. It'll be another person. And God will bring that person in. Before the night's over, we're saying the prayer of salvation together. And in my mind, I'll say, Lord, I didn't even like that person. <laughs> you know what I mean? But now he's like my best buddy. You know what I mean? But, but that's for real. Like, that's God. That's how he does it. That's how he shows up. There have been people that I've gone to church with. Not this church. But there have been people that I've gone to church with that I didn't like. And then all of a sudden, we're like brothers or brother and sister in the Lord because God showed up. And you and I have to have the maturity and the capacity to look beyond the way we thought or the way that we felt. Because God's going to bring who God's going to bring. That's just how he does it. God's going to heal who God's going to heal because he's God and we're not. And we have to be okay with that and we have to accept it. Amen. But the question that I have for you this morning is how bad do you want it? How bad do you want it this morning? See, because there are people who want changes in their lives as long as it doesn't cost them anything. Oh, you want to be blessed by God, but you don't want to put in the work for it. You know what I'm talking about? <coughs> yes, ma'am. Um, well, I, I, I got a video last night from my daughter, and I wish I could share it in front of everybody. It's, but it's on my phone, so I mean, I do have to pass around. But my grandson, JJ, he's going to be 10 uh, Wednesdays. And my daughter and I are
Some of you, you want, you want the, uh, the benefits of marriage, but you don't want to, it. it's too serious of a commitment. You see, there are many people, and it would surprise you at how many people want things, but they're not willing to go through whatever it takes to get their breakthrough or to get their blessing. And this morning, I came here to talk to whoever is willing to do whatever it takes to get whatever God has promised you in his word. I'm here to talk to some people that are willing to do whatever it takes to get their miracle or to get their breakthrough. You see, it doesn't matter where you're at right now because you're, 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 you've got to keep maturing in the Lord. You have to get to a place where you don't care what anybody else says or what they think about you because you belong to Jesus. You see, before you couldn't be able to handle the breakthrough that God wanted to give you because you were too worried about what everyone else might say or what everyone else might think. And now you're growing and you're maturing in the Lord to where you shouldn't care what other people say or what they think or what they complain about or what they argue about or what they murmur or they gossip about you. All you need to know is that God is doing a miracle in your life and the Bible says that we'll see it to full completion before he comes back.
Let me tell it to you like this. After this man was healed, this man went to Jesus. And he said, look, this is what they're saying about you. I mean, I'm paraphrasing. And he said, this is what they said about you. And Jesus says, well, let me ask you a question. Who do you believe that I am? And this man said, I believe that you're the Messiah. God did this miracle in this man's life. On a Sabbath. He broke a rule that was made for men, if I could say it like that. And he worked. And there were so many people, religious people of the time, who were so focused on the order and on the way things went, that they missed a miracle that this man who was born blind could now see. They missed a miracle that this man who was born blind had had a miracle done to him by the Messiah. But see, the Messiah in their eyes was not the Messiah that they wanted. And so they refused to believe in him. I'm talking about the Pharisees. They refused to believe who Jesus was. And so even when he did the miracle, they blamed him. They said, you see, he's not of God because he did this miracle on the Sabbath. So he broke the rules. That's what they said. And then the people said, how can you say that he's not from God when he did a miracle that only a God could do? Amen. Don't listen to your naysayers this morning. I believe this, that God is maturing us for where he's taking us. But we have to get beyond ourselves and we have to get beside ourselves. We, 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 we need to stop looking at the agenda and at the schedule and look at me and what about me and how can I do this and how can I do that. It's not about you. We need to come to an altar and say, you know what, I don't know. I don't know all the answers of life, but I know the one who does. Oh, yes. And before I was blind and now I see, I believe that Jesus wants to open up somebody's spiritual eyes this morning. So that you can mature the Lord for what God not only has for you. See, a lot of us will say, well, what does God have for me? What does God have for me? But what if I was to say it to you like this? What did God create you to do for Him? Yeah. You see, it's not about you. It's not about me. You know, I'm going to tell you some, a little secret that I share with certain people here in this church. Before I get up here to preach, I'm super nervous. I'm talking about I'm nervous as you can get. I don't even eat before I come. And for me, that's nervous. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't ever. Let me look at the camera. I don't ever turn down the camera. So if, if you ever want to find me somewhere, I will go. And I don't believe that no man should eat alone. You understand what I'm talking about? And I share that with you for this reason. Because when I come up here and I'm so nervous, I won't eat because I'm afraid what's going to happen. But when I'm up here doing this thing for God, not for me, but for God, I feel like the way a bird probably feels when it's flying through the air. I feel like the way a rooster probably feels when it crows. I feel like the way a dog feels when it barks. What I'm telling you is I feel like I'm doing what God created me to do. Amen. And I don't know what God created you to do, but if you don't know what it is yet, it's time that you find out today. It's time that you mature in the Lord and say, Lord, what is it that you created me to do? Not for me, but for you. I've got a lot of people and a lot of pastors and a lot of preachers who come and say, hey man, I want to go and preach at the church so that you, your people can see how good I preach. You know what? I'm going to be honest with you. I don't care how good they preach. I care about what they say about Jesus. Amen. You understand what I'm telling you? Yes. If I can say it like this, it doesn't matter how I preach. It's what is being brought out of my mouth that glorifies and honors him. That's what this thing is Amen. about. Amen. Amen. I don't want you to know my name. I want you to know me. That's why this church is called the George Bonetta Church. <laughs> it's called Journey to the Cross because Amen. it's about him. It's about him. Right. And it's about the journey that we take to go and find out who he is and to get to the Lord.
question is, are you prepared to receive that miracle? Are you prepared to receive that abundance? Are you, are you prepared? Or are you going to get what you got and walk away? Because maybe that's why you haven't received your healing yet. Sister Rachel, would you come up here? Settle, would you come up here?
you are worthy of all the glory and you are worthy of all the praise. It belongs to you, miracle maker. That is who you are. You're my God, you're our God, and we belong to you. The Bible calls you Abba, that means Daddy, you're Daddy. You're our, our heavenly Father. Nobody looking around, please. Every eye closed, every head bowed. Jesus, that as we leave this place, 
that church would be in when we walk out those doors. That everyone will remember what we're what we're here for and what we're what we're about and what you're about. And that everyone here would mature in their faith in you, Lord, and in their relationship with you. Let church begin when we walk out those doors. Now, may the Lord bless you. May He keep you. May He make His face shine upon you. May He turn His countenance towards you and give you peace in Jesus' name. Amen. Journey to Cross Church. I love you.